dear friends we the people of india today have solemnly gathered to celebrate the 76th independence day of this great country this great nation called india or bharat the word bharat is composed of two words ba plus rat ba means light rat means full of a land full of light that is in other words a land of enlightenment this land of enlightenment is rightly so called as enlightened land or the land of enlightenment because this country has given birth to great many jambavas in the field of experiments in the spirituality they have attained the greatest heights in the realm of man's exploration about the cosmic relationship of him with himself and the other beings other sentient beings and one such expression which has found its incomparable and matchless manifestation is that this land is called the land of enlightenment the enlightenment master is masters are characterizing the beauty and the characteristics of this land called the land of enlightenment we therefore have to be proudly announcing ourselves to the world that we belong to this land of enlightenment and such a pride such a great privilege that we have just because of our birth in this land of enlightenment therefore my dear brothers and sisters in the gst bhavan i am indeed very happy to convey my heartiest congratulations to all of you that we are now breathing an independent air the air of freedom in this country in this land of enlightenment just because of the great many contributions unimaginable sacrifices made by our heroes from the north northeast south southeast west west and the east and every direction of this country has produced given greatest leaders who are not to be distinguished based on their you know thrilling or pulling male or female but both and those who combining these both characteristics also have stood for and contributed towards the liberation of this country from the colonial yoke we lacked certain minimum standard of unity we lacked a certain minimum standard of mutual regard we lack to share a kind of social sentiment with each other which has resulted in the balkanization of our country in the subdivisioning of our society into too many parceling out of our society which resulted in a porous a kind of vulnerable people and country with that has been easily evaded invaded by the foreigners if we had the sentiments which can cement us together as brothers and sisters of this country ignoring the color of our skin or the tongues that we speak in this country are the dyes that are known to our intestine but we have not done we have 
taken these smaller minor small many 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 <coughs> trivial things as the biggest things and thereby we erected many barriers against the people of the same country and that has resulted in the foreign dominance in this country therefore my dear brothers and sisters particularly the officers of this gst bhavan today i want to give a message to you that before we have become tax men and tax women tax commissioners and tax director generals our tax inspectors and other such denomination that are attached to us we are the citizens of this country and therefore we have a greater responsibility and duty and moral sentiment and intellectual intellectual you know responsibility obligations to this country to the people of this country that we have to work in such a way so that we can cultivate those moral sentiments that sentiments which can bind us together which will ignore the very very trivial things that led to our colonial yoke in the uh, colonial yoke in the past what are those trivial things the kind of diet that you eat the kind of colorful skin that you have and the high, the, the kind of language that you speak all these things you should keep aside nothing is more important than the value of human beings and nothing is more important than to have an independent people in an independent country today we have an independent country from the foreign yoke nobody is today capable of looking at india as a potential prey the days of predators have gone so we have an independent country we are an independent nation are we an independent people in this independent country that question we have to now take up for a kind of examination self examination self introspection if you think of this question whether we are an independent people in this independent country then the corollary to the fundamental to this fundamental question comes out like this are we independent of avoidable fears are our people independent of hunger are our people independent of the atrocities that are being committed in the name of the bygone ancient regime if we are independent from the fears that torture and torment our mind and prevent us from our from reaching our potential growth for which we are destined to if our people are not independent from the hunger if they are not free from the environment which is destroying their psychic strength and their capacities and doesn't allow them to exercise their potentials and capabilities and convert them to their own gainful advantage if our women children are free from the are not free from the attacks in terms of any kind of vulgarities then can we say that we are an independent people in this independent country it has become fashionable for the commissioners of the tax departments or for that matter any department that they should not talk think beyond the beyond the borders of their own subject no a tax commissioner is or a tax officer is having more responsibility to think of this country than anybody else we are no less than in our contribution to the building of this nation as much as our soldiers who are there standing in siachen or kargil why i say so the mind that operates in the border to protect this country from the invasion of the enemies and also the mind that operates free free without fear or favor in the tax department which prevents the evasion of taxes 
both have the same mentality it is like the two branches of the same tree but the root is same the mindset is same we want to contribute towards the nation's progress the nation's development and the happiness of these people of the people of this country when we have declared in our constitution's preamble that we will ensure to every citizen of this country justice equality liberty and fraternity where where do we stand now after 75 years today we stand to celebrate this 76 the day of independence take these parameters justice liberty equality and fraternity that we have taken as the parameters the destiny to which we have to march towards and which we promise that we will be giving to each and every citizen of this country have all segments of the society got the justice in the sphere of social economic and political have all of them got the liberty equality in the social plane equality of opportunity in matters of studies in iits iims and such other important islands of excellences we have to think do we cultivate the sentiment of fraternity that the person born in kashmir and the person in kuch bihar and the person in kerala or trivandrum are the persons of sandiyur in tamil nadu are they all feeling together yes brothers and sisters did we cultivate that fraternity that so if we have cultivated how far that has reached to this multitude of people we have achieved 10% 5% 20% 30% but is it sufficient when hundreds of people million hundreds of millions of people are hungry are surrounded by the fear the scourges of the market system destroying their vital dreams how far we can we can take a complete complicit comparison attitude yes we have done great things kar how do we feel so no one who has a purpose cannot be deviated from that purpose he cannot dilute himself from his concentrated efforts to achieve the goal that has been set in the preamble of this wonderful revolutionary document called revolutionary law called the constitution of india now as officers after clearing the upsc or the different state commissions exams we think that the constitution of india is no longer relevant to us once the exams are over once the once the expected questions are about relating to what are the differences between fundamental rights and the directive principles of the state policy we think that the constitution has come to an end our concerns for the constitution of india have got expired are exhausted no my dear friends you are thoroughly mistaken after marrying you think that marriage is an end no life is the important thing in marriage after marriage if you stop with the marriage that stage itself then you have not seen the meaning of life or the juice of life or the beauty of life when you live together when you walk along the path of that combined sad life with the partner then you come to know what is the meaning of life so also you are required to study the constitution of india not merely for the purpose of writing and clearing the exams but to implement in every aspect of your office work and personal work and in the home sphere and in the official sphere the principles of the constitution of india you are there to uphold the values of the constitution of india that is where 
your responsibility to the constitution lies if that is the case then my dear friends what are the constitutional responsibilities of a tax officer that point of investigation should bother you you should be concerned about this question this is a more fundamental vital question to you otherwise you will be you will be missing the the greater picture by seeing the trees and missing the greater picture of the woods one who has been counting the trees will not see the greater forest we have to see the forest in its full flown beauty in its majestic form then alone we will know for what purpose we are into this tax or tax department and have have become tax officers our constitutional responsibilities are found founding principles for our existence as a tax officer in this independent country the money that we collect has to be justly and fairly and lawfully collected from the tax payers and we should prevent any one rupee also being evaded being stolen being unreported that is uncredited to the account of the governments that is due to the governments of this country as per the due process of law established under article 245 of the constitution of india if we keep this constitutional mandate given to us then we will not be weird and tired of the empty number of procedures that are being devised and changed in the inner working system of our department therefore my dear brothers and sisters we have to look into the constitutional mandate of our existence we we have to collect taxes in a far more efficient and excellent way the money that we collect goes into an anganwadi it goes into making of the bridges roads rural electrification sanitization works and such important fundamental things that are vital for sustaining life and that is essential to provide bread and butter to our millions of brethren living in unimaginable circumstances and conditions which are so hard so unbearable even unimaginable to us think of those who are in the tea gardens working all the time they don't know except that two leaves think of those who are working the rubber factories and the coal mines and those who are coming from bihar and other such places from the length and breadth of this country and going and day in and day out laying the roads breaking the rocks they have no comforts that we have yes a tax officers that we enjoy in our privileged positions and this giant buildings like gst bonds etc therefore let us reinvent those moral sentiments in the era of whatsapp facebook instagram we think that the sociability the sense of fraternity the sense of moral obligations of us to others no longer exist no we have to convert these tools of social media they are called but these tools of media these tools of communication really for social purpose though these communication channels are called as social media they are not used for the purpose of the societal welfare societal growth 
so it is unless that you take an effort the social media cannot become social media but they will remain as many a times anti social media therefore my dear friends let us reinvent the moral sentiment of us that we have an obligation to our fellow citizens of this country our fellow neighbors our fellow beings in this country not only in this country this borders have to be expanded and we should say like the great buddhist poet kadiyan poongundanar in tamil yadum ure yavarum keli the entire university is my home and entire humanity is my tribe that kind of feeling that kind of moral sentiment yadum ure yavarum keli that kind of relationship that we have to establish and declare towards that vasudha eva kudumbakam that making this world as a one family that ideal of us has to be realized from small small steps the daily numerous aspects of life are so important and life is life exist in such innumerable small things that we do in our daily routines therefore reinvent even your routines reinvent your mind reinvent yourself become a new incarnation and see that the independence that we enjoy today within this country is also available to those who are not yet free from fear not yet independent of hunger not yet independent of unemployment not yet independent of the fearless environment which they have to live and enjoy we have to redistribute this independence that we have been given with even in the legends we come to know that the devas have cheated the asuras when it came to the matter of distribution of the amrit that has been take that has been uh worked out that has been churned out from the great ocean of milk the legendary battle that has taken between the devas and asuras also is because of the iniquitous distribution of the amrit this amrit this great freedom this great independence this great values of liberty equality and fraternity and justice that we have today in the form of the amrit that has to be equally distributed if we act as the cunning devas and ignore the asuras based on their color skin and their behavior then you have not changed yourself you are sowing the seeds of poison and you no longer can be considered as a holy celestial being deva or asura these two words should mean that one who is just and fair in his behavior has to be treated as a god in the legend we come across that devas have cheated the asuras then the asuras are the majority people of this country and the minority are really living a life like the indra loka chandra loka they all are glittering like urvashis and tilottamas all the men are looking like indras and chandras but the majority people are not having the taste of the amrit the amrit of education the amrit of equality the amrit of excellence the amrit of equal opportunities if we amrit of justice if we don't distribute this amrit then please be reminded of the declarative for for tellings given by warning a caution given by the founding father of the constitution of india he is more relevant to our times than that has been felt in his own times he is no longer a champion of the marginalized sections today we all are in one way or another way marginalized 
therefore to fight for our rights and to to discharge our obligation towards our fellow brothers and sisters in this country that great man the first law minister of this country dr b r ambedkar's advice is worth remembering now he said that yeah democracy has been achieved now but the the political democracy where one man has one vote or one vote has one value that has been achieved but this political democracy is placed on an iniquitous system of economic and social fields unless otherwise we achieve economic and social democracy the political democracy that we have built up will be collapsing without any foundations therefore to strengthen the foundations of this huge country of political democracy we need to strengthen the economic and social democracy that means to go back to the question of redistributing the amirth that has been churned and taken out from the foreign yoke unless you distribute the amirtha equally socially and politically and economically the social and economic democratic redistribution of the resources of this country unless it takes place the deva asura sangrama the battle of the devas and asuras will take place again and we tax officers cannot afford such kind of things to re happen therefore we also act as a distributors of the amart we have to take the taxes appropriately from those big industries and those who are capable of paying taxes because they are not willing to part away with the money which is there in the pocket of them they have more love to the money that is in the pocket than the love that have that they have for their own kith and kin the color and the smell of money is more attractive to them than the love and smiles of their kith and kin and beloved beings therefore as tax officers we have to take away the money which is sticking to the pockets of those big industrial groups those tax evaders and then contribute towards the redistribution of it in the forms of bridges roads colleges hospitals and public amenities that way my dear friends we have a role to redistribute the amir we have a role to collect the amir from the dangerous waves tsunami waves of tax evaders smugglers and such other economic serious offenders that way please reorient and understand that the constitutional mandate is very important and redistributing the justice liberty equality and fraternity from the minuscule minority called the devas to the majority of the people called asuras in this country to rephrase and remap and to make you understand what does that legendary tale says what is its inner meaning with these words i once again wish all of you a very 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 happy independence day let us salute all those who have contributed their life their blood their tears their sweat and what not towards the wonderful life that we are today enjoying in an independent way in all senses and also please join me all of you let us convey happy independence day wishes to all those leaders all those constitutional heads all those different departments heads and different people of this country from different walks of life a very happy independence day let us go back to the roots of enlightenment because bharat means the country of enlightenment and towards establishing an enlightened india we all shall work vande prabuddha bharat thank you all